And we make our money off of people stuck in traffic, so let's not complain. Uh, Chris and Pat, how are you guys? Good morning. Uh, it, the truth is, Bob, that uh, Chris was born two weeks late. <laughs> that so started it all. This is yeah, going to play catch up here. Mm. Hey, congrats. Uh, you, yeah, congrats. You, know, you, yeah. you know, I used to be on that station that you're inhabiting right now. I do. And yet, this morning, I could not remember the dial position. So, <laughs> so, so I tune in another show that I think is yours, and it's the stupidest, most insipid show. And I think, oh my God, what's happened to the River Show? These guys are awful. What happened? What, are they pandering to. The public, what, what and the, the answer, even... the answer is yes, and it's a very good living. <laughs> you know how that well, goes. Yeah. But hey, I like your style of pandering better. Thank so you well. so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, Speaking of which. Uh, first off, uh, congratulations. Uh, I'm sorry that you ran into traffic this morning, uh, but congratulations. I mean, who would have predicted, with all the success of Almost Live, that you guys could create a new uh, a show, the 206? In this day and era, age when it's so hard to launch something, especially uh, you know something so local, so many local shows get canceled. You guys get picked up for a second season. What's your secret? <laughs> well, I think the secret is uh, much like uh, many veteran broadcasters have learned. Uh, there's one way you can stop getting fired, and it's don't don't get in line to be fired anymore. We just decided we're going to create the show ourselves, figure out how to fund it ourselves. Um, so that we don't have to have that uncomfortable conversation with a program director who tells us uh, they're moving in another direction. So right. We, we and the direction is usually not paying you is the direction they're moving <laughs> well, in. Well, that's yeah. one direction, yeah. sure. And we've uh, that's a, another direction we're in now, essentially, as well. Uh, but uh, we, we were able to fund the show, and viewers tuned in. We got great ratings in the first season, and uh, we're, just, we're, we're thrilled that we get to do it again. And so how did you fund the show? Did you crowdsource it, or what, what did you do? Yes. You did? You know, kind of, we did. Uh, and Chris can tell you more about that, since I don't know what that means. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but That's uh, how you get that's renewed. The way, that's the way it began. We, we produced a, a couple of bits, uh, put them out uh, on Facebook, essentially, and then did a, and did a live uh, gathering at the, the triple door just to see if there would be a response. Is, is this something people would, would want, to, want to see on the air? Is, yeah. is it viable? We, we did that before we ever started thinking this could be a show. Right, Chris? Yeah, I mean, we, we didn't go the crowdsourcing route just because we thought you know, it's it certainly proven effective, but we thought we, we, don't want to, we don't want to go into this with our hand out and, and asking people to to help pay for this, which may or may not work. And we, and we knew on our own behalf that we, we have other lives, and uh, this isn't like the olden days where they have a big cast and, and the TV station funds it and they've got all the equipment. We really gonna, we're going to have to do this on our own with our own equipment and resources. So we kind of tiptoed into it, as he said, step by step. We did a live event. People showed up. The response was great. Um, because of that, the media took notice. They started asking questions. Uh, we just kind of kept going step by step and kept waiting for the ground to fall out underneath us, and it never did. And, uh, and we were very lucky that we had some folks eventually, like uh, Pemco, who stepped up and became our premier sponsor and said, uh, not only will we fund the show, but we'll fund the second go around as oh, well. Oh, good. Okay, because so, I was going to uh, say, I knew you got big local sponsors, but I didn't want to mention any in case they bailed on you. But they're, no, well, we're, yeah, <laughs> they're all we're still in lucky. there. Pemco came back, and uh, Tulela Pizarro Casino jumped on board as well, so we're, we're pretty lucky in that some people said we You know what? Sure. Isn't it ironic that, uh, you know, we came in here and uh, occupied this land and Native Americans, uh, you know, all got put on reservation, and now they're preserving our culture? Yes. You could Isn't that something? <laughs> it's somehow entirely suitable. We must save. Big ball keeps on spinning around. We, we, yeah. must, we must save yeah, the legacy say, of um, the Cashman uh, right. tribe, the Cashman clan. Right, blood, sweat, and tears, uh, and the Cashman family. We must save all these acts forever. Yeah. I'm really sorry that we are late and that we couldn't be there in person today because we're stuck here in traffic, but i got to say, this is an unfortunate, uh, well, actually sort of a fortunate uh, turn of events. Did you guys realize they did, we did Mercer here? This is beautiful now. The Mercer off ramp is very nice. Oh, yeah. this is gorgeous, and they fixed it. it there's no bottleneck. It's just it's going. I've never seen traffic going this fast. I know it's anyway. it's terrible for bums who are starting oh. to start trying to start their own local TV shows though because they used to stand they there had with sign time. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. I would say uh, that. Now I forgot what I was going to say, but 
Uh, the, the, I would say the show hit its stride last season uh, when uh, Spike agreed to come on and do a segment on our on our TV show. That uh, the reaction was overwhelming. And I've heard it said that was the death knell of the show. I was, <laughs> it would never be for you. I was amazed you were, maybe were able to come back and survive that hit. Hey, you know, you talk about uh, the cost of doing a show. Nowadays that everybody's got a TV studio basically in their phone. I mean, and the way you guys make comedy, the stuff that you attempt to do out in the streets and in the communities that we live in, it, it must be easier to make, and you can try a lot more things nowadays. Yeah, certainly the technology is on our side. Now, that, that was sort of the other flip of the coin in terms of should we give this a go is, is that's where I was in my life editing, you know, through laptops and, and as an independent. So I was able to sort of at least show them what was possible on a very simple, uh, very easy to use level. And I think that sort of helped us get over the barrier too to, to realize that, you know, uh, we, we don't have to have the resources of a, a big production office anymore. And uh, some of the things that have been on the show even uh, you know, were things that I edited on an airplane coming back from somewhere and things like that. So we certainly have been able to take advantage of the technology and, uh, and, and yeah, how light cameras have, have become and the fact that uh, you can edit. You know, it, a lot of folks, in fact, uh, Louis C.K. was saying how, uh, you know, the whole reason his show became a, a reality on TV on FX was because they didn't have the budget needed to do a quote-unquote real show, but they you give them just enough. And he said, well, wait, that'll work because I can edit myself on my laptop and that whole first season he put together on his little 13-inch MacBook Pro. So um, that that was personally for me sort of a, an inspiration and a, and a kick in the rear to say, Let, let's do this, let's, let's try this, let's see if we can make this work. And, now you guys so, will, uh, you guys are going to be on after Saturday Night Live every week. Uh, Lady Gaga is hosting this week, then it'll be your show. Saturday Night Live is always current with the you know whatever is the latest thing. Are you guys going to be topical? How many shows do you have done and how much leeway do you have to do to do topical humor like you know could you do a everett 2020 and look into the future and you know people are you know standing around burn barrels and now there's a, a buggy whip factory and a typewriter factory or whatever and slow down slow down i'm writing this down okay <laughs> that's, 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 that's so weird i mean yeah. you well, know we, we try to uh we try to you know plan ahead for some of those things we can't be as topical obviously we can't do the show live um, because of the time slot and all that, that coveted 105 a.m. time slot. Uh, <laughs> so we do uh, pre-tape the show in front of a live audience, um, and we, we don't tape a season out in advance or anything like that. So, no, we, we have the ability to be topical, but uh, we, we don't get too specific because things can change by the time. Uh, you know, we just uh, recorded the show this week, and it'll be on this Saturday night after SNL at 105, and we decided that we're also going to rebrand the show because we were... Yeah, you know, we were joking about the fact that we're on at 105 in the morning, and then that that's kind of late, and we know some people have a hard time staying up, but we're no longer going to call ourselves a late-night show. We're going to be a morning show. And in fact, we're going to be the morning show of record. The other news stations don't even get up. <laughs> that's yeah. very funny. I think you're like the official <laughs> tailgating show for people who want to start tailgating for the Seahawks 12 hours early. You, you start that's with right. you guys. First thing in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, hey, Pat, I, I had an idea for you. Obviously, you can't do anything about uh, Lady Gaga. You know, she's famous for her meat dress. But you could you guys come out dressed in bud someday, dressed entirely in beautifully trimmed marijuana jackets or something like that? I, I think that would go over good. I'm starting to get my, my hands are starting to cramp. I'm right. You're writing all this stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be very Pacific Northwest. What do you guys think about that, that we're about to be... Literally the first place, I mean, Joe was telling me it's not even totally legal in Amsterdam, the first place with absolute recreational legality, and, uh, and you know, there's a, there's a big change from when I first moved to town in 1989 and started watching you, uh, Pat, on TV. We, we've, we've changed quite a bit as a city. Sure have, and, uh, and I, I'll tell you this, in my entire life, I've had two, count them two, uh, marijuana cigarettes. You've had to. Yeah, I've had to. Have you ever smoked crack cocaine with the mayor of Toronto? Not with him, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good clarification. Good to know. <laughs> no, but I, this, this come going backwards a little bit, Chris uh, kind of alluded to this, we are always in show mode. So even when we're going on vacation, we think about, could we shoot something? So Chris and I went to Mexico uh in the spring and he brought his camera with him and so we thought backwards on a bit that we wound up calling old town kent so 
we went into a, a, a Mexican village, just had little cobblestones <laughs> and burrows yeah. and, and, you know, dogs sleeping in the street, oh. and uh, concocted this whole thing about there's a Kent that you don't know about. Oh. It's called Old Town Kent, and then we reveal uh, this place as really existing and... Uh, and it's a it's a place you should visit, but so many so few people know about it. So so even when we're supposedly on a break, we're still always trying to jam stuff into the show and always thinking of that way because that's the way we have to operate to get this thing on the air every week. If you got any excess footage of that old Mexican town, you could just call it the. Uh, have you seen the new Burian lately? Again, again, I'm writing. He's writing this down. <laughs> Do you know what? Well, you I know bet he says that all day to everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is, of course, a big part of the secret sauce is uh, we're trying to come up with new ideas and new things and new spoofs, but because of uh, the culture that Almost Live created, you know, the sweet spot is always... It's high five and around. white guys and uh, Fremont uh, and Ballard, well, yeah. Case, you, know, uh, yeah. you know, Downton Abbey was so hot, and so we created Renton Abbey. Renton Abbey. It was, it was oh, awesome. awesome. I hope that's a regular <laughs> feature. And that I, was awesome. I was a Renton Abbey fan before I was a Downton Abbey fan. I Thank saw you. I saw that, and I saw you guys <laughs> living in the trailer and everything. It's like, I got to see the real thing now. It absolutely is real, and in fact, this season... Uh, just created some uh, some T-shirts with the Renton Abbey logo, and uh, we also did Breaking Ballard, and we've got those shirts as well. It's been, Beautiful, it's been really, really fun. Did you guys ever use Sons of Anacortes? <laughs> no, but we'll write that down. Write that one down too. <laughs> By the way, of everything that Spike said so far, that one you really should write down: Sons of Anacortes. Buggy Club, not well, a motorcycle. It's a golf cart. Uh, uh, no, I, the Sons of Anacortes I, Antique Car Club. That's yeah, what it should be. Are the Sons of Aberdeen, man? What a sad place that is. I hate to say. Uh, it. The Sons of Aberdeen would be the exact same as the Sons of Anarchy, <laughs> so it wouldn't be in parody. We did manage uh, uh, CSI Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> the victim was a cow. That's great. Uh, what fun it is to uh, do uh, local flavor, actual high quality entertainment. You guys are a treasure. To you, but more of it, Bob. Thanks for having us on. It's all right. It's our pleasure. Next time, uh, you know, leave a little earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just we'll, kidding. We'll, we'll just stay down and leave loudly now. Right now. All right. Done. Pat and Chris Cashman, nice, uh, nice. father and son. Uh, Pat, the legendary radio guy who once sat in this very chair. How do I know? They still haven't replaced it. It's an old. <laughs> and it still has the tooth trapper. Yep. All right, Pat. Thanks very much. Take care, all Chris. Right. All right. Thank Bye-bye. you. Guys. Good guys. Breaking Ballard. <laughs> hey, guys, seriously, if you're still listening, Sons of Anacortes rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> like that? Spike will help you, too. I'd love One it. thing I forgot to mention to them, uh, our Seahawks parodies, I don't know if they would want to do music videos or, or play a music video for, you know, Sweet Home Field Advantage. Maybe it's too late. Because, they, you know, the Seahawks, if they have to tape a week or two ahead of time and the Seahawks lose, you know, maybe the parodies are too... Well, there'll come a moment when we let you go to a game when it's all locked up, and all we got to do is right. play that last game. we have Rams the home game. field advantage. Yeah. All right, Pat and Chris, along with John Keister. John uh, was in the trunk. Was in the trunk of their car. I was wondering about that. Yeah. I don't know if they were in the same car or not. I think we could only call one car. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, it is 8.54, still to come on the show. Want to take advantage of Christmas shopping at the mall without having to fight a crowd? What's the least crowded?